I, like many other people from 2020, am a former Genshin player. And like most people, I got tired of the open world formula after so many games. Don't get me wrong, like, I love Genshin's character designs and all that, but the open world formula has got me tired out. And the Inazuma arc was certainly something. After Genshin, I tried giving Honkai Impact a try and... Well, it just didn't really grab me, sorry, I got nothing else to say about that game. Now, Honkai Star Rail. It doesn't feature an open world, so I thought I would get behind this easily. I told myself this time, I wouldn't quit this one. And they got Kafka, so she already makes me want to stay around this time, for sure. And, well, big surprise, but I ended up quitting Honkai Star Rail as well. I felt like I was too dumb for turn-based gameplay. Now, when I heard of the newest game, Zenless Zone Zero, I thought to myself, this time? No, I'd probably quit this one too. <laughs> I didn't care about ZZZ when it was first announced because I felt like I was gonna eventually just quit the game anyways like all the other Hoyo games. Destined to never like a Hoyo game. I tried my hardest to not pay attention to the marketing and I wasn't enticed by the hot Nicole or the uh, hot wolf man. People really went wild for that guy, didn't they? I just looked away and play other games until I got that rare invitation to join the closed beta. When I got that invitation, my first thought was... When did I set up for this again? I decided to give the game a go because when you're invited to a closed beta, it feels like you entered the secret club. Without knowing anything and keeping an open mind, I hopped in. And off the bat, I knew this game was gonna be good because we have a skip button. Oh my gosh! Oddly enough, despite having the skip button, it had a weird reverse psychology effect on me. This time, I felt the urge to watch the story closely. The one thing I immediately loved about this game was its style. The style of the game had this urban setting to it. It felt like I was thrown into Hoyo's version of Jet Set Radio. The street setting with fashionable ass characters, cutscenes having this film real comic style to it. The game looked good, which is something that Hoyo never seems to disappoint point on, their games are always looking really nice and the music is a jam as always. As soon as I had control of the game, I was like, alright, time to shatter everything, bring it on, open world gameplay I'm sure. But instead, I got something that just appealed to me. There was no open world gameplay. It was like instance-based fighting. I don't know if that's the right word to describe it, but basically you get into a level, you beat stuff up, and you're done. I love that. Okay, and before you jump at me, I know Honkai Impact had similar gameplay, but ZZZ style on top of this gameplay was the reason why it won me over. Soon, I will hit the ripe old age of 30, and I'm just not able to keep up with these open world games anymore. Having to go off to a far region of a game to get a specific material to upgrade a skill or an enemy drop tired me out. This is a me problem and I fully acknowledge that, but if you like the stuff in games, go for it. I'm just tired. In ZZZ, the game cuts down all of the moving around and you get straight to the point of things. To get material to promote a unit or upgrade a skill, it's all done on the VR device in your own home. You can even customize the battles to get a specific amount of drops proportional to the stamina used. Also, I just love the dish out flashy and cool attacks and the second a battle is done, it flashes this wipe out text on the screen. When I saw this, I fell in love. It's such a simple, small thing, but it made the game feel cooler. Freeze frame with your character finishing off an enemy, and if you're able to nail a cool pose during this, it just increases the cool factor of battling in this game. That's when I knew this game will be the best Hoyo game ever. For me, at least. The characters themselves are full of personality. For our starting ones, the cunning hairs, we have Anby, the cool-headed robotic one, Nicole, the loud-mouth sassy leader, and Billy is our beloved robot dweeb. The dude loves this game's version of Common Rider, and he's cool as hell for that. You're also able to play the other squads in this game in different chapters, so it's a nice way to get a demo and showcase people that you don't have. All of which never gets on my nerves. I love all of these characters. And for those who hate Paimon, don't worry, we don't have that here in this game. For other characters that I love, design-wise, Ellen is one of my favorites. Shark Maid is a great combination. I dig it. Who can argue against that? Lycon has a dignified and cool look to him, and Grace is my wife. If you try to claim her, I will fight you on the spot. We also have Bang Boos. They're adorable little guys. They make funny little sounds, and they're friendship, providing a little bit of assistance in battles as well. I am sorry, Hoyo. In the past, I felt like your games were not up to snuff. They've always been bashed by non-Hoyo gamers for being mid-gotcha games at best. But Hoyo has improved over time, clearly shown with Honkai Star Rail being one of their best work, and Genshin is... 
Well, they got Arla Chino, so that makes up for a lot of things in Genshin. But ZZZ has captivated me in a way that both of these games did not. This isn't to say that both previous games are horrible. This is more of just saying that ZZZ aligns with my taste in games far more. But I do believe that ZZZ feels to be the most polished of the games in terms of fast-paced combat. The combat is snappy. You have three agents to use at a time, so you don't need to build a team of four people like in Genshin or Honkai Star Rail. Not that it's a huge problem in either game, it's just that my small brain can focus on three rather than four. Beating up enemies and swapping between characters feels very fluid. You can even swap during someone's animation and they'll just retreat after finishing their attack, giving me similar feel to fighting games when you tag out different characters. You can dodge attacks but with a perfect dodge you're able to strike back with a powerful counter attack. In fact, Nekomata excels at this kind of gameplay so pull for her. Don't look down on her because she's a small cat girl, she's quite powerful indeed. Enemies have a daze meter and while they're dazed they will be stunned and they'll take 150 50% more damage than normal, allowing you to finish them off with your hard-hitting attackers. Some of the roles in the game include attackers for your main sorts of DPS, stuns who excel at dazing, supports for a bit of utility, and defense characters who I'm not really too much of a big fan of them because um, I don't really know how they work exactly. I like fighting more than I do defending. There's also attributes in the game like fire, electric, ice, and either, and enemies can be weak to any of them. In the early game, you don't really need to worry about the weaknesses as much. Instead, you should focus on beating up people quickly. Worry about attributes when you have to do the abyss-like content of ZZZ. <laughs> Nothing feels too clunky to play unless you're playing the big bear Ben. <laughs> Walking around with him is just funny to watch. I still love the guy, but... He's just, <laughs> he's silly to watch. There is co-op in the game somewhere. I wasn't able to test it myself, but apparently I saw some test videos of other people playing with friends, so there's something to look forward to there. And let me talk about the music. The music in this game does something where it intensifies as you enter battle. Like, this is Chapter 2's battle music. Typically, I turn down music in games and play my own music, but this instantly grabbed my attention. <laughs> The hub of the game has the perfect unwinding music. After coming out of that high adrenaline combat music to be smacked in the face with this, Hoyo's done it. I, I love this game so much. And that guitar, ah, I, I love it. It's so good. For story for the first time ever in Hoyo history. I sat down and actually listened to the story without falling asleep. Once again, we do have a skip button, so if you feel like you're not wanting to watch a whole entire story for now, you can skip it and replay cutscenes later. You can choose to play between Wise or Bell, siblings who own a video rental store but also act as proxies, which are people who can help navigate those through the hollows. The hollows are basically little small pocket dimensions where monsters appear out of. The world's in a post-apocalyptic state. It's not the best right now, but hey, we make do. So, as proxies, we act as guides for people who want to get through these hollows safely, and hence why we meet up with multiple agents throughout the game. From what I've played, the story is good. It's not like Magnificent will blow your mind away with all these life-changing messages, but for what it was, it was enjoyable. It's like watching an action film plot. I don't need anything deeper than, you know, what I got. Action and, you know, adventure. It's serviceable enough for me at the start, and I believe the game is trying to build up all these different factions and characters to lead up to something big, so it's just setting the pieces for now. And stamina I heard in the past was an issue, but they fixed some things a little bit here. From what I've learned in the past, you needed stamina to play the story in the previous betas, but when I played, it's not required, and please, for the love of God, keep it this way. The story opens up more of the game, and I know people are like me, where they want to get through most of the story and get caught up as soon as possible. And also, side quests don't take stamina either when I played it. At the very least, leave stamina for farming stuff. Keep it out of the story, as stamina gating is not really fun anyways. Once a day, you can also drink coffee in the game to get 60 extra stamina, plus a boost in drop rates for certain kind of mats you want to get. Very cool idea, I like that a lot. And when you're not inside the story or battling, you're at home. Here, you can walk around your neighborhood and talk to people. Also, there's a dog that operates a newsstand. 
10 out of 10 game. Now only if we can pet this dog ho yo. Your neighborhood is basically where you accept side quests from NPCs and do other activities such as eat noodles for buffs, drink the coffee I mentioned earlier for more stamina, take pictures of cats, play the arcade games, and more. Your home is this video rental store where you make money daily by putting in the right combination of videos to trends of what your viewers want to watch that day. You can easily get to different parts of towns without having to walk by using the travel menu option. This allows you to access other areas in the game later on. There's also a day and night feature, but this doesn't go off your real life time, so instead there's a certain number of activities you can do before the next part of the day advances. I'm a fan of some of the designs of the NPCs in town. Rather than putting up a generic NPC model and calling it a day, they gave us unique models like a robot NPC that makes coffee, a four-armed chef, and once again, the dog that operates the newsstand. I just can't stop mentioning this dog, I love him. In later chapters, you'll unlock other areas to visit, so don't worry if things may seem like they can get kind of stale after being in the town for a long enough. But after my 50 hours of playing the beta, I can safely say I never got tired of this town. In the actual levels, you'll sometimes have the TV gameplay, where you basically have this grid-based movement where you solve puzzles and navigate the hollow. At first, I found this to be a drag to play as I just wanted to jump into the combat of the game, but slowly, it kind of grew on me. It's tough to love at first for me, but I got used to it and thought to myself, you know, it is better than running around a whole entire open world map, so I'll take this over that. Dailies look like this. You log in, you look at your errand book in your room, or you can open up the hot key wheel and just go to your dailies menu. From there, you can just rack up points to 400, and these tasks are pretty much the easiest task I've ever had in any gacha game. Each task is typically 100 points already, and 9 out of 10, one of the tasks will be simply to log into the game, so you just need to get 300 more. And the task can range from eating coffee or drinking noodles. It's pretty easy what you can do. Sometimes a task can go for 200, so it makes your job even easier. Over Overall, it takes me about two minutes to do my daily, and I love that. And for the battle pass, which has the weeklies and all that, there is its own dailies, which by the way takes almost no time to do at all, it's very quick. And the weeklies are not tough to do at all. I would probably spend at most maybe five to seven minutes doing all of this, and that is easy compared to other gotchas and their dailies. Now of course, not everything can be perfect, I do have a few gripes about the game, but this is coming from the beta, so maybe some things will be changed. It's still a gotcha game, of course you can scrape by the story with your A and B ranked characters and work with them, but getting some of the S ranked characters which are very powerful with really great designs to them can be rough. Talking with other beta testers, we all kind of agree getting the currency from polls as a free-to-play player was severely lacking. I'm not sure if they're going to keep this amount going forward, but it was pretty tough to get polls during the beta. So far, I was able to get Nekomata and Ellen with Nekomata spooking me as I was trying to get Ellen. And in the standard banner, if you poll 300 times, you can choose one of the six star character choices there. And most of them are pretty good choices. And oh boy, I hope you're a big fan of artifacts from Genshin and Honkai Star Rail because that stuff still returns in this game. It seems to be a gameplay aspect we can never escape. For this game's sake, I was willing to tolerate it. This game's version of artifacts and relics are called drives. All the drives you may need are within reach through the customizable VR device or store nearby. No more running to different areas of the game in order to be granted the drives you need. This significantly cuts down on time and I'm grateful for that. You jump in and fight and move on. Each agent can hold up the six drives and you need two or four to activate some set pieces. Farming can be a bit tough because you need to spend around 60 stamina for a chance to essentially get a few pieces of a certain drive set that you want. And it can be difficult to get a specific drive you may need because you're praying that you don't get a duplicate of the same spot. And also, everyone's favorite part of every Hoyo game, the random stats you can get on these drives. Pray you get something great like crit damage up or just simply cry. For weapons, W engines are the weapons of the agents. So on top of considering whether you want to pull for a limited character or not, you may also need to consider getting their W engines for the best results. For a bulk of the game, I use the Cunning Hair team, Anby, Nicole, and Billy. And when I caught up on the story for the beta, I managed to snag Ellen as the first and current limited s rank character. And if you're a seasoned Hoyo gamer, you would know the story isn't the hard part of the game, but rather Genshin's Abyss or Star Rail's MOC. In ZZZ, we have Hollow Zero and Shiyu Defense. Hollow Zero has the TV gameplay plus tough fights, while Shiyu Defense has timed battles, and if you don't complete the battles within a time frame, you'll lose ranks. This is the part of the game where you need to consider proper team comps and also consider enemy weaknesses. Weaknesses. Both have been proven to be pretty tough for me, and unfortunately at the time of the recording, I'm not yet caught up to tackle on these challenges. They're pretty tough. 
So pick a few of your favorite agents, make a good team comp, and don't try to spread your resources around too thinly or else you're going to be in trouble when you can't tackle on harder levels. Despite these gripes, I still love ZZZ. I'm willing to stick through all of the downsides and gripes that I have about this game and pray to the drive gods for the best rolls possible. ZZZ is perhaps my favorite Hoyo game yet. It's as if it took Genshin's combat of swapping between teammates and refined it. Genshin had its fantasy, Star Rail has its sci-fi space theme, and ZZZ with its funky urban post-apocalyptic setting was perfect for me. I will be playing this game on launch for sure, which really hurts because my beta account won't be carrying over anything, and I'll be making videos on this game. ZZZ has reinvigorated my love for Hoyo, and I'm willing to stick around and see how well this game grows, and hopefully it improves further and doesn't end up, you know, falling to the wayside and becoming terrible. I hope I see all you guys playing the game when it comes out. Until then, see you guys in the next video.